Good evening and praise the Lord. Thank you so much for joining us for our Wednesday Bible study here at Good News. God is good and we're excited about the word. Thank you so much for being with us. Amen. I'm really excited for another night of Wednesday night Bible study. And as always, if it's your first time here, we're so happy you're here and we pray you get something from the message. Let's go ahead and get started with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to speak your word to your people. We pray that as we go forward, that it'll be all of you and none of us. Pray that you'll speak through us and use us, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 So pretty much for the entire summer, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. Yes. And it's been really good. I've really enjoyed everything we've learned about it. I've learned a lot about the fruit of the Spirit and the Holy Spirit and mm -hmm. kind of just about how I can make it more active in my life. Yes. So. Yes. Last week, we finished up with the last attribute of the fruit of the Spirit. So this week, we wanted to kind of do a recap, kind of a refresh everything on what we've talked about mm -hmm. all summer, mm -hmm. just so you can kind of get a refresh in your mind. And also, you take the time and go back and watch some of the other old messages so you can yes. keep that alive and you keep it fresh in your mind Amen. and in your spirit. So let's go ahead and read our backdrop scriptures as always. We're going to start in John, in the book of John, chapter 16. And we're going to read verses 13 through 15. So it says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will tell me, tell you whatever he receives from me. Praise God. Amen. So this is Jesus talking to his disciples telling them about the Holy Spirit and how the Holy Spirit is going to give them, going to teach them exactly what to say. Whenever mm -hmm. they need to say something, the Holy Spirit will tell them what to do, tell them exactly what to say. The Bible says that when, when you open your mouth, he will fill it. Mm -hmm. So the Holy Spirit is going to, is going to tell them exactly what to say. Yes. There's another scripture in the Gospels where Jesus is talking to his disciples, telling them when you're going before people and you're preaching the Gospel, mm -hmm. don't be concerned about how to answer their questions or how, or be afraid to say what needs to be said because the Holy Spirit will tell you exactly what to say. Right. And you won't have to worry about anything like that. And also, you know, we talked about when the two of the disciples after Jesus was re resurrected and ascended, how they were standing before some men telling, the, telling them exactly what the Bible, you know, what Jesus had taught mm -hmm. and how it was clear they were unlearned men. They were not scholars, but all their answers were perfect. Yes. And they were exactly what you'd expect from a wise scholar or someone mm -hmm. who really knew what they were talking about. You know, this is interesting because the fact that they were with Jesus, Jesus mm -hmm. was with them every step of the way. Yes. And they didn't understand that he was going to leave them. Mm -hmm. And that now that I'm gone, you can't do this on your own. No. You're going to still need something. So I'm sending you a comforter, a friend, a yes. guide, mm -hmm. and that's the Holy Spirit. It is. They're probably listening like, what? <laughs> what what's going to happen? How is this going to be? But it's just God, Jesus told them ahead of time. Mm -hmm. He warned them of everything that was going to happen. And as a result, we received the Holy Spirit. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Now let's go over to Acts chapter 1. And in Acts 1, we're going to read verses 7 through 8. It says, he replied, the Father alone has the authority to set those dates and times, and they are not for you to know, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Yes. So right here, now this is really good because you know, just telling them that, you know, like you said, when he's gone, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit's going to come and be that comforter to give them the power to be able to do all this because we can't do it alone. Yes. And one thing I think is really interesting here that I'm just kind of noticing right now, mm -hmm. he tells them, you know, it says Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and the ends of the earth. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked about every week how this is not just for the disciples just then, but it's for us today. You know, we have to go through the entire world and tell everyone about yes. the gospel. Yes. But also he says, you know, he mentioned specifically in Samaria, you know, mm -hmm. the Jews did not get along with the Samaritans. Mm -hmm. So the fact that he's telling them that this is for the Samaritans too, it means it's not just for people who are like you, who you want, who you naturally get along with. Yes. You got to tell everyone because yes. you know, the idea is for everyone to be able to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And when you say the uttermost parts of the earth, mm -hmm. there's no way that certain people could do it and then go here and they couldn't mm -hmm. do it. They needed that power. So this power is all over the earth. So yes. people all over can spread the good news and spread the word, giving the answer to Jesus and giving the answers that Jesus is the way. Amen. Amen. <laughs> he gives us power to go all over and do it. <laughs> Praise God. Amen. Now let's go over to Galatians chapter five, where we talk about the fruit of the spirit. 
And in chapter five, we're gonna read, start at verse 22. And I'm gonna read that out of the Amplified because I really like how the Amplified breaks it down. Mm -hmm. And it says, but the fruit of the Holy Spirit, the work which his presence within accomplishes, wait, sorry, this is Amplified Classic. Amplified, okay, here we go. Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of his presence within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while waiting, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature together with its passions and appetites. If we claim to live by the Holy Spirit, we must also walk by the Spirit with personal integrity, godly character, and moral courage, our conduct empowered by the Holy Spirit. We must not become conceited, challenging, or provoking one another or envying one another. Praise God. Amen. That version is so clear. It just almost yes. teaches itself, you it know, does, just yes. reading it in that version. <laughs> I really like how it says, you know, the fruit of the Spirit is a result of His presence within us. You know, yes. we talked about at the beginning how the fruit of the Spirit comes when you yield and you submit your life to the, to, to the Lord. You know, once you allow him to come in and start to change who you are, mm -hmm. these things are not, you can't pick and choose which ones happen. You know, they just it starts to take over yes. and really change who you are to be who God has called you to be. Amen. And I really like how it says that, how it breaks it down. It's his presence, it's the result of his presence within us. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Praise God. I like also in 25, it says, if we live in the spirit, let us also mm -hmm. walk in the spirit. Yes. That is so key because we can not confess one thing and do something else. Mm -hmm. If we live in the spirit, we have to walk that way. And how you, we've said time and time again, how these all just come together mm -hmm. in such a beautiful way, making a complete person. Yeah. So the Holy Spirit can make us all that we need to be if Amen. we take what he's given us and do the way he wants us to do it. We can uh, walk in as a beautiful example of what God is in us Amen. by walking in the spirit. Amen. And also like how it breaks down, you know, each of the different attributes, you know, it yes. says that it is love, which is unselfish concern for others, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Love is like, you know, not expecting something in return, not doing this so that you get something else in return. It's just, mm -hmm. it's unselfish concern for others. It's giving of yourself to make sure that they get what they need yes yes mm -hmm. and then joy which is you know really self-explanatory mm -hmm. and then how i could put i would put inner in front of peace so it's like it's inner peace it's peace with, with inside of you that is so key it's mm -hmm. not just you know it's not just you know okay for the moment or content here it's peace mm -hmm. knowing that everything's going to be all right because god's going to take care of you yes amen and then patience it's just, you know not the ability to wait but how we act while waiting you know yes. anyone can wait because whether you want to or not you're going <laughs> to wait for something yeah but it's saying that it's not the fact that you have to wait but how you act while waiting keeping mm -hmm. your attitude right keeping your demeanor right mm -hmm. correct making sure that you're you know sitting there or doing whatever you have to do in the time being mm -hmm. to make sure that things go smoothly for you. Many of us have seen people who have waited, and it's like, they aren't waiting very nicely, you know? <laughs> yeah. You have to teach your children even when you, how to wait, mm -hmm. because they might be waiting in a way that's not, that's, that's not gonna give you, get you good results. Yeah. But you have to learn how to be patient. Yes, you do. And you have to learn how to wait in an attitude where the person you're waiting for is not gonna be upset with you when you come, yeah. or different things, but the patience, the way you wait is so key. Mm -hmm. I mean, while, while you're waiting, you can be doing other things with, that will yes. bring other parts of the fruit of the Spirit to you in a better way. Mm -hmm. You can be waiting with love. You can yeah. be waiting with joy. So all of it goes together. Amen, amen. Mm -hmm. And then we have kindness. Mm -hmm. And you know, we talked about how kindness is showing you know, showing kindness to people, helping others out. Mm -hmm. And then goodness, and we talked about how good, you know, God is good and how we have to show goodness and do good things for people. Mm -hmm. And then we talked about faithfulness, about how God's faithfulness never runs out and we, there's no way it can run out. No, That's no. who he is, he's faithful. <laughs> faithful now and faithful then. Amen. Then Don't we talked about um, gentleness mm -hmm. and how, you know, God calls us to be gentle. You know, gen you know, we don't have to be mean and angry all the time. Right. We should be gentle people and then, we finish up with self-control. Yes. And talking about self-control is a really important one. It's something that this, I don't know if it comes naturally to anyone, mm -hmm. but it's something we all have to develop and have to work on to make sure that we get exactly what we need in life. Yes, yes. Amen. So now what we want to do is we want to kind of go through, you know, go through them again a lot quicker this time and talk about 
some of the things, the high points that we really enjoyed going through all this. Yes. So we're going to start with love and work our way through it. So let's go to 1 John chapter 4. And in 1 John chapter 4, we're going to read it, starting with the KJV, we're going to read verse 7. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. And this was manifested, the love of God toward us, because that God sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. Herein is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. Was that inspired? That's, yeah, that's mm -hmm. good. Okay. Um, and in the NLT it says, Dear friends, let us continue to love one another, for love comes from God. Mm -hmm. Anyone who loves is a child of God and knows God. But anyone who does not love, who does not love, does not know God, for God is love. Mm -hmm. So this is really important right here. It says, you know, if you love, if you show love to people, you are you know God and you're a child of God. Yes. But it also says that if you don't, if you say that you love, mm -hmm. but you don't, I mean, anyone who does not love does not know God. So if you say you know God, but you're not loving people or showing them love, so you don't know who God is because no. God is love. Yes. And yes. if you're not showing that, then you don't really know who he is, so you don't know him. Yeah. God is love, it says, mm -hmm. and God is our father, and fathers teach their children. Yes. So. For that reason, we should love because mm -hmm. the fact that we're imitating, we're doing what our Father does. Yeah. He loved. Jesus was our perfect example coming into this world, mm -hmm. loving, giving his, his life for us. Mm -hmm. And so God loved us so much that he gave his only begotten son that we could be accepted too. And that's the supreme love. So we have to make sure that we are loving. Amen. And sometimes yeah. you don't feel like loving, no, you don't. <laughs> but you have to make a, a conscious effort. I'm going to love, yeah. especially when people are not treating you in a way that you feel they should be treating you. Mm -hmm. But Jesus, um, God sent his son Jesus when the world was a mess, when yeah. there was no hope for the world. Mm -hmm. But yet he sent us. Yes, he yes. sent Jesus to love. Amen. And he sent to die for us because of the love that he had for Amen. us. Praise yeah. God. Amen. Yeah. And, you know, in verse nine, it says, God showed how much he loved us by sending his one and only son into the world so we might have eternal life through him. This is real love, mm -hmm. not that we love God, but that he loved us and yes. sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. Yes. And then verse 11, it says, Dear friends, since God loved us that so much, we, all, we surely ought to love each other. No one has seen God, but if we love each other, God lives in us and his love is brought to full expression in us. Praise God. Amen. I like how it says, <laughs> Dear friends, since God loved us that much, mm -hmm. we surely ought to love each other. Amen. You know, so it's saying like <laughs> mm -hmm. the amount of love that he showed us yes. by sending his son to die for us, mm -hmm. it should be easy for us to do what we have to do. You know, we don't have to send our children to die for people. No, so no. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a bold statement. It's good though. Especially when they're unlovely, you know? Yeah. But yeah, mm -hmm. he did it. Amen. Thank God. And then it says, his, God's love, God lives in us, and his love is brought to full expression in us. Yes. Meaning, like, you know, the, f the fullness of God's love is shown through us because mm -hmm. God lives in us. Yes. Amen. Now let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4. It says that they will know we are Christians by our love. Mm -hmm. So that's one reason why we have to make sure that we're loving in the way that God has called us to. Amen. And then in 1 Peter chapter 4, we're going to read verse 8. It says... Most important of all, continue to show deep love for each other, for love covers a multitude of sins. Yes. And, you know, this is showing, saying that, you know, we're supposed to care for each other and make sure that we're all walking the way that God calls us to walk. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. It's not saying, you know, cover each other up and, and you know, just, you know, move on, like not address things that are wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, it reminds me of a skit I saw one time where um, this guy was blind and he was walking on a hike one day and he was about to walk straight off a cliff. Mm -hmm. And two guys were sitting there just, you know, kind of hanging out, having a nice little day. Mm -hmm. And the guy's about to walk off the cliff and he says, hey guys, how's it going? They're like, hey. <laughs> and he says, um, am I headed towards the cliff? And one guy is about to say yes. And the guy grabs him and like covers his mouth and says, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. And he says, he's about to walk off the cliff. I have to stop him. He says, no, we have to love him. Let him do what he wants to do. We have to love him in that. He says, mm -hmm. but that's not fair. You know, we don't love him and let him hurt himself. Yes. Love, mm -hmm. you know, showing love is correcting people to make sure they're walking the path God called them to walk, not 
whatever the world tells them to do, whatever they think is right in that moment. Yes. So yes. The, the true love would have been telling him, hey, you're about to walk off a cliff. Don't go that way. Go this way. Yes. Not just saying, let him do what he believes is right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That would lead him straight to death. Yes, it would. Yes, <laughs> so it would. love makes you say, no, this is not it. That's not it. But the word of God is that you have to yes. follow this and follow it the way it's, it's written here. Mm -hmm. But like you said, people will say, well, he's, he's just, he's doing his best. You know, he's doing his best. Yeah. But your best is not good enough if exactly. it's not by the word of God. Yeah. So we have to make sure that through love, and we're telling him in a way that yes. is showing love. Mm -hmm. We're showing love by telling him and also saying it in the right, right. way. Yeah, you don't but, beat him over the head no, and say, get it together. No. <laughs> but this is so key that we love because mm -hmm. love will let you know that you're off. You yeah. know, love will mm -hmm. let you know that you're going the right way. Keep going, keep, don't get discouraged. Don't be weary. You're doing, you're doing the right thing. That's what love will do. Yes. But it will not let you go off the edge. Mm -hmm. It will not let you go off the cliff. That's yeah. not real love. No, it's not. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Now let's read. Let's, okay, now we're going to kind of pivot a little bit and talk about joy. Yeah. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention at the beginning, I forgot. Mm -hmm. um, okay. We talked about how all of the attributes of the fruit of the Spirit are all super intertwined. You yes. know, you can't really talk about one without talking about the others. Mm -hmm. Whenever, like, we talked about David a lot during this series and how, you know, he was patient, how he, he persevered, how he was loving, you know, he showed love to everyone. Mm -hmm. We talked about, you know, Ruth, how she was patient. You know, she stayed with Naomi when she could have walked away and gone to what made sense. Yes. How she was, she showed love to Naomi and how everything turned out in the good, you know. Mm -hmm. Even David, not David, Joseph, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Joseph, he really just threw him in, they sold him into slavery. Yes. Mm -hmm. They wanted to kill him, but then they sold him into slavery. And when it all came down to, you know, he was patient, waiting for the, the promise of God to show up. Yes. He, um, you know, he had joy in the patient, in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the period in between of getting mm -hmm. of getting the promise and the promise being fulfilled mm -hmm. he was you know happy to learn everything that he went through because yes. he knew that it was all for for the good of, mm -hmm. of what god had promised amen we mm -hmm. talked about how you know he even showed kindness to his brothers in the end patience when, too with yeah, them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. he didn't try to you know he tried to rush it but you know <laughs> he didn't wasn't you know he just he did what god wanted him to do and he yes. sat through it and he learned everything he could in the process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you know in the end when his brothers um, showed up at, trying to buy grain. Mm -hmm. He showed kindness and self-control, you know? Yes. He made sure they had everything they need, mm -hmm. gave them their money back, when mm -hmm. all, honestly, he could have had them all killed, because that would have been fair, you know, yes. normal standards. As soon as he saw him, he could have had him thrown into jail, <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. I remember you all. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's, that's really important, that yes. how intertwined these are, and how when you're developing one, you're developing all of them, yes. and how they're all gonna show up at the same time, and you need to make sure you're practicing all of these. Yes, and as we said before, or we can't pick and choose which one we're going to mm -hmm. work really hard. I'm going to really work on this joy. <laughs> I'm going to have a lot of joy, but yeah, I don't yeah. want to have any patience or kindness, you know. Right, yeah. I'm going to work on this love, you know, but what about your peace, you know? Yeah. We mm -hmm. have to work on every part of it. Amen. And as we work on each part, it makes us that complete person that God is calling for. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, talking about joy, we want to talk about um, in Nehemiah chapter 8. This is when they found the book of the law and they read it to all the people and the people realized they had been way off. Mm -hmm. You know, they realized they were not doing what God called them to do. And it says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. I'm yes. going to read that verse. 10. Verse 10, yes. Mm -hmm. And Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with a feast. This is after everyone is mourning because they realize how horrible they have been mm -hmm. and how they have not been following God's law. Verse 10, and Nehemiah continued, go and celebrate with the feast of rich foods and sweet drinks and share gifts of food with people who have nothing prepared. This is a sacred day before our Lord. Don't be dejected and sad for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Praise God. So this is showing you when, you know, not just when you realize you've been off, but like when things are not going well, the joy of the Lord is your strength. He has given you like, you know, for in this situation, Nehemiah said, you know, they have the book of the law. It's like, so don't be sad and mournful because you were doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. Be happy that God thought enough of you to correct you and yes. get you back on the right path. Amen. So the joy of the Lord is your strength. You know, that is his joy. You know, he's giving you that. So be joyful and be happy about mm -hmm. that, mm -hmm. that you can now go and do things the right way. Yes. It, it comes to mind the scripture, the joy 
Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. So many times we can go through certain things and certain periods and we think this is our life and this is how it's gonna be. But we have to realize that that will pass. And we have to go knowing that joy comes in the morning. We have to say, no, joy is coming because joy is my strength. Sometimes you have to go to the point where I'm gonna cast off this sorrowfulness, this whatever I'm going through and say, no, joy. Yes. because I need strength. Amen. That's why it says coming to his presence with praise and thanksgiving. And when you come in there praising, thanks, thanking God, it brings joy, yes, it, it brings strength. Amen. That's why it's so important for us to have praise and worship at church. Mm -hmm. And it's good to have praise and worship and need to have it in your private time too. We, when we come on Sundays, we should raise the roof. Yeah. We should mm -hmm. say, wow, what's going on in there? <laughs> because the joy of the Lord is our strength. Yes, it is. And we're praising him because that joy is so key. Amen. You know the song, you know, I'm pulling on joy from heaven's reserve. Yes. You know, yeah. that's really good. You know, when, cause like when things are rough, when things are sad, you know, you don't have to sit in that sorrow, you mm -hmm, know? Mm -hmm. You have to rehearse your victories, you mm -hmm. know, and have the joy of the Lord. Mm -hmm. And you know, like we said, and yeah. rejoice. Because when bad times come, when sorrow comes, it comes, it doesn't come to stay. No, it doesn't. So we have to do what we need to do in order to get past that. Amen. And that's the joy. Let that strength come. Yes. Praise, worship, doing what we can do to get past that. Amen, mm -hmm. amen. Now we want to read Psalms chapter 16, verse 11. And we want to read that out of the KJV. Thou will show me the path of life. In thy presence is fullness of joy. At thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Praise God. Amen. I also want to read that out of the voice. Okay. Just one second. And it says, instead, you direct me on the path that leads to a beautiful life. As I walk with you, the pleasures are never ending. And I know true joy and contentment. Yes. Amen. You know, true joy and contentment. Yes, That's awesome. Yes. And in thy presence is fullness of joy. Because the fact that the, the um, life will not be full of joy if we're living it carnally, mm -hmm. if we're living in a way by what just the world says. Yes. That's why we have to stay in his presence mm -hmm. because that's when that fullness of joy will come. Amen. It gives you joy when it seems like, why in the world are you joyful? I mean, <laughs> yeah. Dave, um, Joseph asked the guys when they were in prison, mm -hmm. why are you so sad? Yeah. It's like, we're in prison, in prison you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but no. In thy presence, spending time with God can bring joy even at times when you feel like, no way. Uh -huh. No, yeah. it's God. It's mm -hmm. God. Also, I like how in the voice it says, and I know true joy and contentment. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. oftentimes you see people who look happy on the outside. They're, you know, they seem joyful and really, you know, really content with everything around them. Mm -hmm. But on the inside, they're not. They're, mm -hmm. they're tearing, you know, they're torn up inside. They're mm -hmm. sad. Mm -hmm. They don't know what to do. But, you know, because they're not walking with God. You know, once you walk with God, you can you can get true joy and true contentment. Yes. And yes. that is what you want. You don't want it to be a false joy or a false happiness. You want it no. to be true joy. You know, that is so important because when it's not a true joy, mm -hmm. times when things are really sad and when you get along, that's when the devil can breed depression, mm -hmm. suicide attempts, different things like that yeah. because you're, it just overwhelms you. Mm -hmm. So fullness of joy is in his presence. Amen. You want that true joy that's inside and outside. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's true. Now let's go over to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. And in verse, in chapter 5, we're going to read, start at verse 15. It says, See that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Always be joyful, never stop praying. Be thankful in all circumstances, for this is God's will for, you, will for you who belong to Christ Jesus. Do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Do not scoff at prophecies, but test everything that is said. Hold on to what is good. Stay away from every kind of evil. Amen. 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 That's really good. I like how, you know, it kind of brings up multiple parts of the fruit of the Spirit. And mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it really, you know, tells us exactly what we need to do. Yes. I like that. Rejoice evermore. Mm -hmm. No matter what, I, yeah, I need to always, rejoice. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, things a good reminder says, you know, pray can never stop praying. Because mm -hmm. you know sometimes 
you know, you think you've prayed enough? It's like, no, just you keep praying, you know? Mm -hmm. The Bible says to meditate on the word day and night. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's what we have to do. Amen. Amen. Now let's go over. Now we're going to start talking about peace. Okay. So, you know, peace is, you know, talk about inner peace, how it's knowing, it's that confidence knowing that everything is going to be all right no matter what happens, no matter what is thrown at you, no matter what people say, yes. no matter what is going on in the world. You have that peace knowing that God, he already, he, he said it was going to happen. That's going to ha what's going to happen. You know, there's a mm -hmm. verse in the Bible that says that he declares the end from the beginning. Yes. Meaning from the very beginning, right before when it, everything starts, he's already decided exactly how it's going to turn out. Yes. So when we, knowing that he's already decided what's going to happen in the end, mm -hmm. we can have peace knowing that we can, we're, you know, we're going to show up sitting pretty. You know, we're not going to be falling apart or everything's going to be torn apart. We're going to be good to go. I remember once when we were going through a really hard time, um, Pastor and I, we were um, at home we got this call, that call, different things just weren't going the way we wanted to go. But we decided, he told a story about this minister and it just brought joy and we just started laughing. And that was the last thing we, you would have thought we would have done. Matter of fact, he was laughing so much that I started laughing because I was trying to think, if this is not funny, but it brought joy. Mm -hmm. And then I remember when we got to church later that evening, our pastor started a song, I Got a Feeling, everything's going to be all right. You know, that's peace. Mm -hmm. I got a feeling that the Holy, uh, Holy Ghost told me everything's going to be all right. Yes. Even though I might be going through this right now, it's going to be all right. Amen. Because of the fact that we are walking in the Spirit and we have the joy of the Lord and we have the peace that only He can bring. And it's like, be all right, be all right, <laughs> it's going to be all right. So Amen. that brought even more joy. That brought yes. even more peace. No matter what it looks like right now, I know this is not the end. This is not the end game. It's going to be good. Amen. Praise Amen. God. That's good. Amen. Now let's go over to Isaiah chapter 26. And we're going to read verse 3. Let's read out the KJV and the NLT. Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee, because he trusteth in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Amen. And I'll read that out of the NLT as well. It says, You will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you, Trust in the Lord always, for the Lord God is the eternal rock. Amen. You know, I like how in the KJV says stayed on you. You know, mm -hmm, if mm -hmm. you, it's his mind has stayed on you. Yes. You know, you're always you're always trusting God, always praying, meditating mm -hmm. on the word, reading the Bible. Yes. You know, you stay in God's presence. You're mm -hmm. not just kind of in God's presence now and kind of let's go do something else now and come back in it later. <laughs> right, no, right. Always in God's presence. Mm -hmm. I like how it said fixed, but stayed is the same thing. Mm -hmm. And that's something we have to do yep. because it will come. I'm, I'm, my mind is stayed on him. And next minute you can be thinking, that is not right, this or whatever. But you have to make a conscious effort. Yep. I'm going to keep my mind stayed on him mm -hmm. because I know that he is my, as it said, everlasting strength yes. when my mind is stayed on him and perfect peace Kayla mm -hmm. perfect peace is something that the world j definitely does not have yeah. but we can exhibit that and we can show the world this is perfect peace amen. because our mind is stayed on him amen you know it kind of reminds me we were while we were when we first talked about peace mm -hmm. we talked about how you know you meditate on the, you say, you know, he was stayed as his fix on you mm -hmm. you know his mind has stayed on you we talked about how you have to quote the scripture. Yes. You know, always quote it. You know, talked about Psalms 91, how mm -hmm. that's a prayer. For, you know, it's essentially, a, it's a scripture of protection. Yes. So you pray yes. Psalms 91 and, you know, personalize it so that it talks, you know, talks about you. Yes. You know, I've even gotten to the point where if I've ever had a bad dream, mm -hmm. in that bad dream, I'll start saying the blood of Jesus. Yes. I'll plead the blood of Jesus. Yes. And the dreams shift so quickly. Mm. Suddenly everything is peaceful. It's yes. no longer that bad dream. It's a good dream. You yes. Know, I just, because, you know, I keep my mind stayed on God. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm... Um, I remember we uh, mentioned the story about how some three soldiers were in a really bad situation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, two soldiers were like kind of scared, like, you know, what are we going to do? We're all going to die up here. Mm -hmm. And one soldier started quoting Psalms 91. Yes, yes. And they started quoting it with them. And they just quoted it over and over again. Yes, yes. And in the end, they got out of their safe because mm -hmm. they had that peace that God provided. Yes. Because they were quoting the scripture. They were, their thoughts were fixed on him mm -hmm. instead of on the danger and the chaos that they were in. Amen. And they were they were calm. They were mm -hmm. able to get through it and they got out alive. Praise God. That's yeah. beautiful. Beautiful. Amen. Now let's go over to Hebrews chapter 12. And in Hebrews 12, we're going to read verse 14. It says, 
Work at living in peace with everyone and work at living a holy life. For those who are not holy will not see the Lord. Amen. Amen. So that's, that's pretty, that's a, that's a, it's a bold mandate, you know? Yes, it is. It's just it work is. at living at peace with everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people you don't want to live in peace with because they're, <laughs> They can be annoying. They can just, you know, get on your nerves like yes. anything. But, you know, mm -hmm. you have to work at living in peace with them mm -hmm. to make sure that you're living who God has called you to live. Amen. To be. And to live the life that you see. Because, you know, if you're not holy, you will not see the Lord. And Amen. we all want to see the Lord. So mm -hmm. we have to live a holy life. Yes, yes. I like that, too. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Mm -hmm. So it means that we have to make sure, like you're saying, that we are, that it's not just a decision we make. Yeah. We have, well, it's a decision we make, and mm -hmm. also we have to make sure that we're doing it even though we might not feel like right, it. Yes. This is such a spirit where we have to make sure that we are not just going by our whims or our mm -hmm. desires. It's a God-led life. Yes, it is. And Caleb, I like also where it says, peace is calm and chaos. Mm -hmm. I, I, that is just <laughs> so beautiful because even though that might be here, there, people all over the place, mm -hmm. all everywhere, you know, peace and chaos. Yes. It's like, why is that person so calm? Because of the spirit of God that's in him, that's Holy Spirit, it's peace. And then another um, note I had here, you must have faith to have peace. Yes. You must have mm -hmm. faith to have peace. That's good, yeah. Because if you don't have faith, if you don't have faith that God can do it, mm -hmm. if you don't have faith that no matter what happens, no matter what goes, you won't find that peace. You won't. Because you're still searching. Mm -hmm. But my faith is built on the fact that God is gonna keep me, God is gonna do this, he's gonna do everything that needs to be done, no matter what I see, no matter what I'm thinking. Amen. So we have to have that faith. And it's like we, the Bible says, without faith it's impossible to please yes. him. So we have to make sure we have faith that he, I know everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Amen. Praise Amen. God. We have that peace. Amen. Praise you know, it reminds God. me of the peace and the chaos. It's mm -hmm. calm and the chaos. You yes. Know, when Jesus and his disciples were crossing the lake mm -hmm. and the storm came, yes. you know, they're all thinking they're going to die and Jesus is in the boat sleeping. Yes. You know, <laughs> he had peace. He was calm in that chaos. And <laughs> When they told, when they finally woke him up, he said, "Peace, be still." You yeah, know, it was so simple for him. And they said, "What kind of man is this?" Yeah. You know, but um, that lets you know that when Jesus said something they were going to do, we're going to the other side. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna rest. I'm gonna go to sleep. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I don't I don't have to be fearful or Amen. anything like that because of the peace of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we're about out of time. You know, we'll pick this up next week and we'll continue on our recap. Yes. And um, but before we go, if you're sitting at home and you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you know that you need to get your life right with God, I want you to pray this prayer with us. Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. You know my life. You know my life. You know how I've lived. You know how I've lived. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I believe. I believe. That Jesus is the Son of God. That Jesus is the Son of God. And he died and rose again. And he died and rose again. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise Amen. God. If you just pray that prayer with us, you are now part of the body of Christ. The Bible says when one soul is saved, all of heaven rejoices. So welcome to the family. Praise God. Amen. And also, if you prayed that prayer with us, we want you to call us or text us at 601-708-3550. We have a packet of information that we want to get to you to get you started on your walk with Christ. Also, we want to be a resource for you to help you get everything God has for you in Amen. life. Amen. Praise God. God, God is so good. <laughs> Praise <laughs> yes, God. He is. That love, joy, peace that also makes you feel good, you know? It does. Praise mm -hmm. God. Welcome to the family. Amen. At this time now, we'd like to give you an opportunity to give to the um, work of ministry of good news. We believe that good news is good ground and we'd love to have you so. To give online, click the link in the description. To give via text, text GNCC an amount you want to give to 73256. 73256. And while you're preparing your offering, the child's and offerings, I want to pray over them. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word we received. We pray now that as we return our tithes and sow our seeds, Father, that our offerings will go and return us a hundredfold return, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, we hope you enjoyed your time with us tonight. We are here every Wednesday night at 7 p.m. And also we are at our Florence location every Sunday morning at 8 a.m. And if you can't make it to Florence this week, we hope you'll join our online service at 10 a.m. Praise God. And before you go, I want to bless you and then I'll pray us out. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Yes. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this word we received. We thank you that you have shown us how the fruit of the Spirit, how yes. it can change our lives, Father. We pray that as we 
continue as we leave this place, but not your presence, you'll help us to develop them in our lives, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, as Pastor always says, God bless you and remain blessed. We'll see you next time. Praise God.